Hello, children of God. I'm glad that you're here. You know, I'm just going to get right into the word of the Lord today. Of course, you know, we always say a prayer to invite the spirit of God in, especially to come within you so that you're able to fully receive what is being shared today, fully let it penetrate so that you're transformed. You know, a lot of the messages lately, actually, I would say over the past year or so, we've been talking a lot about your authority in Christ Jesus and rising above in that, right? Increasing in authority and increasing in power. And by doing that, when you do increase in authority, you're able to take authority over all of the works of the devil. I believe that's Luke chapter 10, verse 19. But when you take authority over all of the power of the enemy, then you don't worry about certain things that show up in your life because you know who your God is. And not only that, you know what the word of God says, but taking authority requires for you to see what's coming at you and then speak to it and then watch it come to nothing. But not only do you speak to it, but you're speaking specifically the word of God. And so we're going to be talking about that today, how you must open your mouth and speak. The words must leave your lips and you must speak it with authority. You must speak it backed by faith, right? Faith that's within you. And then when that happens, when you have faith in the word of God and you're speaking the word of God, everything has to bend to align with God's word and God's will concerning your life. You know, I was reading a comment. Um, I believe it was actually a few weeks ago. Can't remember what video it was under, but someone said, you know, after watching so many of these messages, I'm finally starting to get it. And I thought, well, thank God, because that means that that person is finally beginning to understand that once you learn the word of God, then speak the word of God and you believe the word of God, things will happen for you. Things will change for you. And, you know, my husband and I were talking earlier today and we were talking about how people who have been under the ministry for quite some time, I'm talking about either it's been up to a year or more than that or close to a year, then we don't, I'll put it this way, things happen for them because they are completely tuned in to the word of God that is being shared here. Not only that, but after they leave these messages, number one, they're transformed. And number two, they go into deeper fellowship with God. They take the word, they consume it, they are fed well. They go into deeper fellowship and relationship with the Lord. And that's just because the word of God works, right? That's because the word of God works when the word of God is spoken over you and it's taught to you, right? Back by the power of God, it works for you. It changes your life. It changes your relationship with Jesus. And when your relationship with God changes, you change. And that's just the order and how it goes, right? You're increasing in wisdom by taking in the word of God. Then you increase in stature because it's changing who you are. It's changing the people you hang around. It's changing your world around you, right? And then you get favor with God and then you get favor with man. That's just how it works. And it's going to be the same for every single person who locks into this message. You come back, right? You take notes, you get in your word. You don't just let this word be it for you, right? Like you take the scriptures that are shared with you because I'm going to be sharing a lot of scripture with you today. And then you go in your time with the Lord and you allow the spirit of God to open up the Holy Bible to you. You allow the spirit of God to minister to you the words that are on the pages. And now you have caught your own revelation of what these scriptures mean and your life will change. It will never be the same, right? But then also when the spirit of God opens up the words to you to now they have new meaning they come alive to you you're now speaking them with your authority right you open your mouth and you speak things will happen for you there are many times in my life where i can think of very specific moments where i've had to actually speak i've had to actually go to the word of god first remind myself no god this is what your word said then secondly speak the word of god having faith in what god's word said and i'm going to tell you that it changes everything it changes the situation changes right before your eyes and it's going to be the same for you and by the way it's with the word of god not with your words there's a vast difference here and i'm only saying that because i've actually heard a lot of people say i've heard a lot of people say and you see it in little quotes when you scroll instagram you know when you scroll instagram or facebook you see quotes all the time where people say your words have power well are you christian and are you speaking the word of god if so then yes it has power it has incredible amounts of power. We're going to be talking about that today, by the way. 
and incredible amounts of power. But if you are not saved, right? And I'm going to say a prayer of salvation towards the end of this message. I'm going to make a note to myself so I remember because I don't want, and I thank the Spirit of God for even bringing that, that to my mind because I don't want to miss that because I know that there are a lot of you who are new here and some of you may not be saved, but you just clicked on this message because either someone sent it to you or it popped up on your feed or you have on autoplay where you were listening to something else and now this is automatically come on. And this is why I say that you're not here by accident, but I will say that prayer with you all towards the end. We don't do that every message, but I, I do do it when, when the Lord leads me to. And I believe that when that happens, there's very specific people here that he wants to hear that mess, uh, that prayer. And he wants to say that prayer. And so don't even remember what I was talking about. Well, let, how about this? Let's get into prayer. And then I will get into the word of the Lord today. I thank you, Jesus, for sending everyone to this message who's under the sound of my voice. It doesn't matter what time they're listening to this. They could be listening to this the day of, or they could be listening to this a year later or a month later. I know that either way you are an on-time God and this message is on time for them. There are many times where you'll send a messenger, you'll send a message, you'll send a book, you'll send a resource, information to your people, but it was from you. It was orchestrated to arrive in their life at that exact time, that exact moment. And because of that, you have reached your hand into their life to div divinely intervene. And it's an appointment, Lord God, a turning point for them. Let this message be that. Let this message be a turning point for them where the lights finally come on, where they get a light bulb moment and they say, aha, yes, now I know. I must study the word of God and then speak the word of God and then my situation will change. That is the truth. Anything that goes against that is a lie and we send it back to the pits of hell. I thank you, Jesus, for giving us your holy word. I thank you for leaving us with your spirit, Lord God, because we know that the spirit of God leads us into all truth, which is the word of God. And so I ask that as we speak the word of God today, as they learn this revelatory information you're pouring out today, Lord God, by your spirit, I ask that you will send your spirit into their lives in a way where they are now led into all truth, that when they read the word of God, it now has come upon them as a personal revelation, right? They catch personal revelation, God, and what it is that you're trying to show them. Everything comes across differently depending on the, the season of their life that they are in. And so I ask that as they read the word of God, specifically the scriptures that we're gonna be talking about today, the spirit of God begins to move across the pages to speak to them about them concerning the season of life they're in, concerning whatever it is they are facing, I thank you, Jesus, for always being on time, for always sending the right people here, for always showing up for us and never leaving us or forsaking us. I thank you, Jesus, that your power is still mighty and alive today and it will never die. It will never die because it originates with you in a realm of eternity. I thank you, Jesus, that your word is not bound by space or time and that you have given us access to you, that you've reconciled us back to you, that we are redeemed through the blood of Jesus. I give you all the thanks. And so I lower myself today, Jesus, so that you can be exalted. I go low in humility so that you, your name, Lord God, can be exalted today. I ask that you pour out fresh anointing on your children who is here and listening right now. I'm just going to flow with the spirit of God today. And so I ask that you will, as your spirit is here, speak because you know your children are listening. I thank you, Jesus, for always being present with us, for opening up their hearts and their minds so that they're able to receive. I speak to any spirit right now, that is trying to distract or hinder anyone under the sound of my voice from listening to this message, from receiving it and, and receiving the fullness of this message. And I say, go back to the abyss where you came from into utter darkness. They will receive the love, light and revelation of the Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, for all the fruit that will come forth from this and the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. So. As I was saying, you must open your mouth and speak. And I'm going to tell you, as a result of this message going forth, as a result, as a result of this message being released and you actually hearing it, you tuning in, 
there's going to transpire in your life because everyone's faith must be tested. There's going to transpire in your life a circumstance or a situation that's going to require you to speak the word of God and then you'll get the victory just by you listening to this message. But I'm glad that you're here because it's just going to increase you all the more, right? You can never, there'll come a time in your life where you will realize you can never stay where you were. You can never stay in the same spot, right? You can never just get comfortable there. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about because you're looking at your life right now and you're thinking, this is great, but I'm not comfortable here. And that's, that's it, right? Paul talks about how he's content with the little, but then also content with a lot, but he never says comfortable. Do you know there's a difference between being comfortable and being content? Being content means that, yes, I'm thankful for what I have. I'm thankful for being here. God is so good to me, but I'm ready for more. I'm ready for the next level. That is what it means to be content. It means to be thankful for what you have while still looking on to the next. But to be comfortable means to not want more. It means you're comfortable there. It means, I want you to imagine someone sitting on a couch, right? They're very comfortable there. They don't want to get up because they're comfortable. They're familiar with that couch. They're very comfortable. When, imagine when you're laying in your bed, right? It's early in the morning. You're comfortable in your bed. The alarm clock goes off. You don't want to get up. You're comfortable there. But to be comfortable and to be content means two completely different things. You can be content, but not comfortable. When you're content, it's great, but you want to get up off that couch, right? You want to go somewhere new. You want to get out the bed. You want to see what the day has for you. You want to see what the Lord has for you next. And so there are some of you who are looking at your life and you're saying, okay, I'm not comfortable here. I'm content, thankful, thankful for what the Lord has done for me, not comfortable by any means. And so for that person, you're always looking for what the Lord has for you next. And it's a beautiful thing, by the way, because he'll grab you by the hand and take you to that next. He'll take you to that next level of glory. And so I'm glad that you're here. I'm telling you that there, there will be some things just by you listening to this word. It's going to trigger some things in your life. And I say this by the spirit of God, because all faith must be tested. Right. And so when that happens, it's going to require you to speak the word of God and then you'll see it shift and then you'll see it shift. You know, I want to take you somewhere. That's not in my notes, but it's coming to mind and the spirit of God just keeps bringing it up again. And so I want to take you to a very specific scripture. Let's go to James chapter one. So I want you to see something because I was going to get right into the word, but I just kept hearing this scripture (laughs) as I was saying, all faith must be tested. And so I want you to see something in James chapter one verse seven give me a moment and i'm going to be reading this from the esv give me a moment okay listen to this James chapter one, verse actually two, we're going to start at verse two and I'm going to read through verse four. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know, this is verse, actually this is verse three, for you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete lacking in nothing. And so there it is, there it is. When you come across or you're coming against, or there's a circumstance that presents itself, you will be required then, and I'm talking about this circumstance is it's coming against you, by the way, you will then be required to speak the word of God and then you'll get the victory over it. But do you know that it is the word of God spoken to you? It is revelation being poured out to you that triggers certain things to happen in your life. And now I'm being reminded of another scripture that I want to take you to. So give me a moment. This is sometimes it turns into a completely different word and I'm just letting the spirit of God move. Give me a moment because I want to make sure I'm reading it word for word. Okay, give me a moment.
All right, I want you to come with me to Mark chapter 4. And I want you to listen to this. Mark chapter 4, verse 17. I believe. And because I don't have these written down, we're just flipping through the pages. Okay, Mark chapter 4, verse 17. Listen to this. I taught on this before. And they have no root in themselves, and they endure for a while. Then, when tribulation or persecution arises on the account of the word, immediately they fall away. And so, what does that mean? That means that when you listen to words like this, and there are words that are meant to ignite something in you, words that are meant to propel you forward into another level of glory, into your next step of destiny, right? When the word is released, it triggers situations, outcomes, circumstances to transpire in your life. And then when those things transpire in your life, because it comes because of the word, there it is, Mark chapter 4, verse 17. You can study these scriptures out. It comes because of the word. When it presents itself into your life, you now are presented with an opportunity. And the opportunity is an opportunity for victory. But you gain the victory by speaking the word of God. Getting in the word of God, speaking it when you see that situation, and then you'll gain the victory. And then you'll just keep going to glory to glory. Keep going to that next level. Because once you get it, once you understand that speaking the word of God brings about just incredible victory that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise, then you can, you continue doing it, right? You just keep doing it because you realize that the word of God works, right? When you read the word, it'll work for you. And so there are times where you must open your mouth and speak. And I believe that there's a specific circumstance. There's this word will trigger something in your life to where now it's giving you an opportunity to receive victory over something that you have been believing in God for, for a very long time. Some of you, maybe it's just recently you went to the Lord about something, but you're going to see the victory as you speak the word of God. And so some things only happen when you open your mouth and you speak it out. I want to take you to Mark chapter 11. Thankfully, we're already in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 11, verse 23 through 24. Listen to this. Okay. Truly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And we see a couple of things, actually a few things happening here. And of course, this is Jesus speaking and he's giving, he's giving a lesson on the fig tree, but we're owning it on verse 23 through 24. And what he's saying here, number one is you have to speak, right? When you see a mountain before you, you have to rise above and your authority, have faith in the word of God and speak. And then the mountain will move. There are some mountains that will never be moved unless you open your mouth and speak. Some of you are staring down a mountain of debt, right? You're staring down a mountain of debt. You're staring down a mountain of who knows what it could be. Maybe it could be what you consider to be a mountain, right? It could be a mountain of sickness, right? It could be a mountain of like we just said a prayer about mental health, whatever it may be. That is, you consider that your mountain, Mountain just means something that is so large. You see it so large, you won't be able to overcome it. But I'm going to tell you, this is something the Lord showed me many years ago. And I'm going to give you this, I'm going to share this revelation with you. When you come up to God's perspective, when God says, come up here and you come up to God's perspective, you're now looking down, right? You're looking down and mountains look very small from God's perspective. And so it's not, it's, it's that what happens is from God's perspective, you can look down and the mountain looks incredibly small, speak to it and it will move. That means you taking authority over the mountain, you coming up higher than the mountain. That's how you take authority. You move something under your feet. And so that's according to Luke chapter 10, verse 19, how it's literally reminding us, hey, the devil is under our feet. God's given us authority over everything that comes as the power of the devil over wicked things. And so you have authority over it. And so the mountain is now under your feet. 
But first you have to speak to it. Do you see it? Mark chapter 11, 23, it says, say to this mountain, you have to speak to it, be taken up and thrown into the sea. But then here's the thing. The latter half of that verse says, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass. And so that's the kicker there is that many people will speak the word of God, but they truly don't believe it. They truly don't believe. They truly do not believe that the word of God is true and that it will work for them. And so they're speaking words that they really don't believe. They're speaking with them with the double mind. They're speaking half believing that it will happen, but then the other half, they don't believe it. And especially when it's Jesus speaking, right? Jesus is the one who said this. And so you have to believe it says clear as day. Don't doubt in your heart. But believe that what he says will come to pass. And this is why I say when you're somebody where you listen to a word like this, it triggers a situation in your life. And now you're faced with something that requires for you to speak the word of God to get the victory. When you see that you get the victory, you'll never be the same. Because anytime something transpires in your life, you're going to go to the word of God now because you've seen it happen before. You've seen it happen before and you know it will happen again. And the word begins to come alive to you and, and your life will never be the same. And so... There it is. Don't doubt. Do not doubt. And it says, but believes that what he says will come to pass and it will be done for him. And then verse 24, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so there it is. There are some things not only, you know, that won't happen unless you open your mouth and speak, but there are also some things that won't happen unless you open your mouth and just ask, right? You ask it as a question. There's a difference between decreeing and declaring a thing, speaking the word of God, but then asking a question, right? Just going to the Lord and just asking, just asking God. I want to take you to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 through 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who acts receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open. And so there are some things that you won't receive from God until you just ask, until you just ask. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes the Lord just wants you to come to him and ask. Because there are a lot of times where we will want something, right? God will put a desire in our heart and just wait. He'll put a desire in our heart and wait to see what we do with it, to see how we go about trying to bring that desire to pass. And I'm going to tell you more times than not, Many people will have a desire from the Lord within their heart and then go into the world to try to bring that desire to pass. And then when everything fails, then go to God. So God will put a desire in your heart. And sometimes it'll lay dormant for a very long time because you just have yet to go to God to ask him, how can you partner with him and bringing this desire to pass? I did a whole message on that where I talked about partnering with God to bring your vision to pass. God is waiting on you to just partner with him. Come to him and ask, Lord, how can I partner with you to bring this to pass? It's his desire, right? He put it in your heart. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. He's decided to give you the opportunity to bring his vision to life. And so you have to go to God to help bring that desire to life because he put it inside of you. And so there's some things that will only happen when you ask. There's some things that will only happen, like it says, when you knock on the door of opportunity when you seek it out in the word of God. Let me know if this is making sense for you. And so there are also some things that will only happen when you bind endless. We're talking about opening your mouth and speaking, but what do you speak? Well, we're sharing it now. There are some things that you have to literally speak out as in reading the word of God. There are some things that you have to literally speak out as in opening your mouth and asking God. And then there are some things where you just have to straight up bind and loose. And we're going to go there. That's to Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, where it says, Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on the earth about anything, they ask. There it is, axing, right? It's talking about opening your mouth and speaking. And I'm going to get to that in a moment, why it's important and not just, sometimes it's okay to pray silently in your heart and there's a moment for that, but we're not talking about that right now. 
But then there are other times where you must specifically open your mouth and speak it aloud. It's because you were made in the image of God. The breath of life was placed within you. And when you release that breath of life into the atmosphere, there are things that must weave itself together to form what it is that you prayed for. It must. And we're going to get, get there. But it says, and again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my father in heaven. And so there it is. There are, th there are times, there are things that will happen in your life at times, situations and circumstances that will transpire where you must simply open your mouth and bind it and send it back where it came from. Open your mouth and loose things into your life. This is why we pray thy kingdom come, right? That it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You're creating a bridge from heaven to the earth realm with your words, but your words have to be spoken. They have to be spoken to create that bridge. So there are also certain things that will only happen when you call it forth. This is what I mean when I say you must call in your harvest at times. You must speak the word and call in your harvest. This, hap this works for many, th many other things as well. We're going to be talking about that, but there are some things that will only happen when you call it forth by speaking and calling those things that be not as though they are. And we're going to dive deep into this one here because I really need you to see it, how the spirit of God is wanting to paint the, the picture for you here. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter four. Romans chapter four, verse 17. Listen to this. And I'm going to break this down because I hear many people say this. I say it a lot. But we're going to go deep into it so you can really see what the word means when it says God spoke. He called those things that were not in existence. But when he spoke, they came into existence. And so as someone who's made in the image of God, you have that same ability. But here's the thing. Here's what most people don't share you. You only have that ability when you're speaking the word of God because Jesus is the life. So when he speaks, things must come to life. And so when you speak the words that are in the Holy Bible, which is Jesus, because he's the living word, things must come to life. Okay, Romans chapter four, verse 17, listen to this. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations and the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. And I want to take you to, there's so many scriptures that parallel this very scripture. And I'm going to make the connection for you. I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 11, verse, I believe it's verse 1 through 3. Just give me a moment. <clears throat> Okay, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. Listen to this. Now faith is the assurance of the things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their com com commendation, that word. <laughs> so I'm going to pause there because the next verse is very important and it makes the connection of what I'm sharing here. But what I want you to grasp is that it takes faith. It takes faith to call those things that be not as though they are. And so you have to be a person who believes, as it says, and do not doubt in your heart, and then you will receive, and then you'll see it happen for you. So you speak, and then you have faith, and then you'll see the victory. Then you'll see the situation change. Then you'll see it go in your favor. Verse three, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by, here it is, the word of God, the universe was created by the word of God, not the words of Shannon, not the words of whoever, the word of God. So that what was seen was not made out of things that are visible. That's a very deep thing when you really begin to grasp it. That means the Lord looked out and there was nothing. Of course, there was water. But there was absolutely nothing. I'm going to tell you, there's no Big Bang Theory. There is no big bang. This is why it's called a theory. There's no big bang theory. God was there in the beginning and the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. In the beginning, there was no burst of energy. There was the word of God and there was God. He spoke. He hovered over the face of the deep. He spoke and then things began to come into existence. That's exactly how it played out. 
And so it says, I don't oh, I'm not talking to you, Siri. Siri thought I was, okay. He spoke and then things began to come into existence. And so before God made the heavens and the earth, there was nothing, absolutely nothing, darkness. And then he spoke and then things began to weave itself together and it formed what we know is the earth today. It formed the trees, formed the flowers, the animals, seed that produces fruit. It all came into existence by God who spoke it into existence. And so when it says, who gives life to the dead, we're talking about Romans chapter four, verse 17. We went back there and gives life to the dead. This is the Lord and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Well, God made you in his image. And so when you speak the word of God, the same thing must happen for you, for, for the realm of authority that God has given you, covering the jurisdiction that God has given you. As a kingdom ambassador, yes, you do have a specific area of jurisdiction that God has called you to, whether that be if you are a parent, okay, the jurisdiction is your family. You are called to have authority over anything that may come into the atmosphere and area, right, where you dwell, that may come into the lives of your children, the life of your spouse, right? The area, the city that you're living in, and you take authority over it, you speak. And then when you wanna see the word of God in your life, meaning you wanna see it come to pass, when you speak the word, the word will work for you. You speak and call forth things that be not as though they are, and it must, it must show up in your life. I've seen it way too many times in my life to ever doubt it. And when it happens for you, you will be the same. It, it grows your faith in a way that nothing else ever could. Nothing, you know, I was listening. I can't remember, I think I was scrolling on TikTok and there was a guy, they were doing interviews on people who were wealthy or they've gathered some sort of success in life. And there was a guy who was in one of the interviews and they were saying, how did you get all of your success? And he said, well, you know, definitely faith. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, he's, He's talking about having faith in the Lord. No, he begins to speak more and he's talking about any kind of faith, any kind of faith. And he starts talking about having faith in yourself. What's more important than anything and all of those things, a lot of those things are flat out false. You must have faith in the word of God. You must have faith in King Jesus. And it's so important that you put God first. It's so important that you are seeing how you can't just say any words, right? You can't just say, I have faith in myself, or I have faith, a lot of people say this, I have faith in the universe. Well, God created the universe. Those are created things. You are a created thing. The universe is a created thing. And so in the beginning was God, God was the word and the word was with God. And he spoke it out and then things began to come into existence. And so it was bigger than having faith in you, having faith in all these other things. A lot of times these people need deliverance. So that's a whole other message but it's having faith in King Jesus and the Lord and his word. His word will never return back void, right? In the beginning, before there was anything, before anything ever was, there was the word. And so when you speak the word, things must happen for you. It has creative power. Okay. And so it says he gave life to the dead, called into existence things that do not exist. And I have to share this because there are many Christians who still talk about the Big Bang theories if it's something that actually happened. Well, do you read the Bible? I want to take, I'm actually, I'm going to take you to Genesis chapter one, because I believe that some people need to see this because you can't believe in that. But then at the same time, believe that there is a God who was in the beginning and spoke everything into existence. Genesis chapter one, verse one through three, we're going all the way back to the beginning and the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. Who created it? God created it. The heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness is over the face of the deep. I just have to share this. And I know that I'm staying on this for quite some time. But I believe some people need to, to hear this. And so there are many people who believe. When you believe that there was something as such as the Big Bang Theory. It really takes. It really takes credit from the true creator who is God, right? Who is the Lord who was in the beginning and spoke the word, then things begin to create it, create itself. 
was that what is with, was without to the tongue twister form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. You know what? And the, the spirit of God just revealed this to me. The spirit of God really just revealed this to me. You know, do you not think, and I want you to really begin to see this. Do you not think that the reason why science has worked incredibly hard for decades, centuries even, to make you think that God didn't create anything because it was just some big burst of energy and then voila, we're all here. That's not how it happened. But do you think that the reason why they push this in the school system and they push this on children and they push this all throughout the lives of humanity, it's worldwide by the way, is because they don't want the children of God. They don't want people to truly wake up and realize who they are in God, that they were created in God's image. Because if they really came to the truth and they published that in textbooks that are within school curriculums, people might actually see, wait a second, there wasn't just a burst of energy, energy. There actually was a God in the beginning who created everything. Then who am I? That must mean that I am created in the image of God. That must mean that God created me. That must mean that there is a God. Oh, and he spoke it into existence. That must mean that my words have power. Let me search it out. Let me get a Bible. Let me get the word of God. Do you not think that is, that's an intentional way to wipe out the word of God? And I'm not even going to get started on the fact they removed Bibles from the school system. That's a whole other thing all on its own. But there it is. It says, and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse three. And then God said, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And then if you keep reading all chapter one, he speaks and continues to speak and continues to speak. And then things begin to manifest. Things begin to appear. Things begin to weave itself together. I can even get down to the science of how it happened as in literally energy began to come together and create matter, which brought about the trees, brought about solid things that we see in the earth realm. But what I'm trying to get you to understand is how powerful it is when you release the breath of life by speaking the word of God. And it must be the word of God because in the beginning was the word, right? That's John chapter one, verse one. I'm not going to go there, but I encourage you to read it. In the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was with God. And so it's very powerful when you really understand that you must speak the word of God and not only that, call things forth, things that you know are yours, things that you know belong to you, that God has said is yours. Oh, the, the devil will try to delay you. He will try to put roadblocks in the way. He will try to hold things up. It's a legal activity all illegal activity. When you speak the word of God, he must release it because he's bound by the word of God. It's law, literal, literal. He can't go into the courts of heaven. The word has already gone forth. The blood of Jesus is superior and it's already speaking on your behalf. And so this is how somebody like Ezekiel, right, was able to speak life into the dry bones in the valley of dry bones. I'm going to take you there. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse, um, verse 4 through 5, reading from the ESV. Give me a moment. verse 4. Okay, listen to this. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. There it is. Not hear Ezekiel's words. Not hear Shannon's words. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. And do you see it? Do you see how the breath of life that is in you, because the Lord literally from the beginning breathed it into Adam and then, you know, 
centuries later, years, years later, you get the point, here you are. Same breath of life within you. Do you see how when you speak it out over your situation, anything dead must come to life? The word of God, when you speak the word of God. Because Jesus is the living word, right? When you speak it out, it must come to life. But it is specifically the word of God. It's very important that you grasp that. It's only the word of the Lord that brings life. Why? Because Jesus is the way, the life, and the truth. I really am praying that you grasp this. I know that you are because the spirit of God is here with us now. And so God has made you, child of God, and his image, and then place the breath of life in you. And when you speak, things must happen for you. And then there are some things that only happen when you pray. There are some things that's only going to happen when you pray. And I'm going to share with you many, something many people won't share, but prayer is not just you speaking. When I learned this many years ago, it changed my life. Absolutely changed my life. Prayer is not just you speaking. There's most of the time prayer is you listening. If you've seen my journals, you know, because I, those of you who are in the promised land mentorship, you know that I encourage you to use a prayer journal because I share how it's changed my life, changed my prayer life specifically. But when, if you were to see my prayers or prayer journal, for an example, you would see that maybe 20% of it is me talking to God and the other 80% is God talking to me. How is this happening at such a large level, right? Why am I most of the time hearing God is not me speaking? Because I listen. I listen. You know, something very interesting. I remember, I think it was, a, it was quite a few months ago, I was talking to my husband and he was saying, um, you know, do you need time to write the notes for the message so you can think? And I had to share with him that I'm not thinking, I'm listening. There's a difference. Because when you're thinking, you're, in, you're inserting your own thoughts into what God wants you to do. But when you're listening, you are allowing God to minister to you his plans, his thoughts. Come on, somebody. His thoughts, his plans, his ways, his path for your life. And so prayer isn't just you speaking. If you're spending most of the time talking when you're in prayer, there needs to be a restructuring and shifting of your prayer life. And you have to sit and allow God to minister to you. And that will take you listening. And I'm going to tell you, when I first started this, it was mostly me talking. It was mostly me talking. But then as time went on, then now it's mostly God talking. Mostly it is God talking. My hands can't write fast enough. It is God talking. And a lot of times, I'm going to tell you, it's been, I would say, over the past few months or so, it's just me listening, right? I listen. I take instruction. I put on worship music, and I'm just listening. And then sometimes the Lord will give me a vision every now and then. But my prayer time is not just talking. It's prayer partnered with meditating on the Word of God. And then when you're looking at the Word of God, and the Spirit of God is present. He will reveal to you all truth. He'll open up the book to you, right? He'll open up the book to you. And prayer isn't just talking. It's not that anymore for you. You've advanced too far in your walk with God. It, it's more than just talking. It's more than just a long list of requests. God, can I have this? God, can I have that? Can you do this? Help me, Lord, on this, blah, 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 blah. You're listening. And you're going to get far much. You're going to get a lot further, faster, being somebody who listens to God versus somebody who talks to God. I know that's going to really click for some of you. And so some things will only happen when you pray, when you take it before the Lord, and then you sit and you listen to hear what God has to say. It's going to get you further, faster. I want to take you to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Um. Okay, listen to this. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Why is it saying it in this way? It's saying it in this way because this was at a time, and it's still going on today, by the way. This is at a time where there, are, there were a lot of religious people. There were the Pharisees and Sadducees who liked to gather in large groups, go out in public places and pray just for how it looked, right? Just for the looks of it, just because it made them look holy, just because it made them look righteous. 
but not because they genuinely wanted connection and relationship with God. You know, when you genu genuinely want connection and relationship with someone, you speak, but then you wait and you, you let them speak. What kind of relationship is it if you knew somebody and you talked all the time? Have you ever known somebody like that where you knew somebody and they talked all the time? You couldn't get a word in. 90% of the time as you listening to them go on and on and on and on about their life problems, what they're going through, the struggle that they had, and now this has come up. And then you try to get a word in, maybe to offer some wisdom, right? Maybe to, maybe to give your thoughts on the matter and you could barely get a word in. What kind of relationship is that? It's not a healthy one. And so many of us treat our relationship with God like that. That's not where prayer is, not at all. Jesus is telling us, Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, when you pray, go to your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. It's, a, it's an intimate thing with God. Prayer is intimacy with God. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. You'll get a reward for that. You will get a reward for that. And so there's some things that will only happen when you open your mouth, pray, and then wait. But like you really pray, pray. it's real prayer. It's not you talking the whole time. And you hear what God has to say. I'm going to tell you a lot of times I'll go to the Lord with a request. I'll go to the Lord, just not even a request, just laying out what's on my heart. Lord, this is what I'm going through. I'm giving it to you. Boom. He comes with an answer to my prayer. He tells me something I didn't know before. Now I see it differently. Now I perceive it differently. Now the whole thing that was causing me to be distressed or upset or sad or, or downcast, right? Now my spirit is completely changed, completely lit up because I see it differently now. Where did that come from? Revelation from God because I sat and I listened. I allowed him to minister to me something that I couldn't tell myself. God knows you better than you know yourself. Some things will only change when you pray, but it has to be genuine, real prayer. Let me know if that makes sense. Even if you go up to verse five, it says, and when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. He calls them hypocrites for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received the reward. Do you know that there are people and I'm just going to call it for what it is, religious people who will spend hours upon hours praying in groups at churches. I'm just being real with you, praying um, and circles, I mean, groups of people, maybe it's not at a church, maybe they go into networking communities, groups, whatever. They pray for hours upon hours, go home and then live the most sinful life ever. So what was that? What was that? Was it just for show? Was it just for show because you were around other people who had certain titles? Well, Jesus sees right through that. He calls them hypocrites. And then he says in verse six, this is how you do it. When you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray for your, to your father who is in secret. Then your father who sees in secret, secret will reward you. Now, is he saying not to pray in groups? This is not what he's saying. What he's saying is, is that don't let that be your only way of praying and then go home and you have no relationship with God because then that person is a hypocrite. Why are you praying in public anyway? If that's the case, it must be because there is some selfish gain from that. Like, opinions of man that don't matter anyway. And so this is the importance of real, genuine prayer. There's some things that will only happen when you pray and it must be real and genuine. You bring it to the Lord, you present it to the Lord. And so sometimes God just wants to see you turn to him. Sometimes he just wants to know that you've made it up in your mind, no matter what you see going on out there, you're going to turn to him. You're going to look to him as your source and your way maker. You know, there are plenty of things that I have went through in my life, in my personal life, where I'm not going to tell anyone about. I don't call up family. I don't, there are some things that I don't even tell my husband about that I go through and I take it to the Lord. I take it to, I go to the Lord first and then I listen. I listen for what God has to say, and I see things completely different, completely changes my outlook on the entire situation, completely changes the path that I was going to go. Maybe I was going to go down the wrong path that seemed right. Now Jesus has put me back on the right path. And the same will be for you. And then there are some things that will only happen when you rise above in your authority and you 
declare and decree it to be so, and then it must be established unto you. That's Job 22, 28. And I'm going to read that in the Amplified Classic Edition. <clears throat> Okay, let me go there. Job twenty two twenty eight. Okay, listen to this. Um, no, that's not the that's not the verse that I wanted. Oh, maybe. Oh, it was in the wrong version. Okay. You shall also decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. And so there it is. There are some things that will only change. You'll only get the victory over it when you decree it. And first you have to decide. I'm going to break down to you the first half of that verse. It says, you shall also decide. And so first you have to decide. It has to be an internal decision. This is why I say, you know, I, I shared with you all a few messages back how the decision to obey God, the decision to be obedient is first an internal decision. It's, it's, it's better to make that decision internally than to just do it because it's something you're supposed to do, which is you can, right? You can. But then you have to also make that de decision in your heart. Because you can do something that you're told to do just because you're told to do it, but then it's, it, it becomes a routine, it becomes religious. Your heart isn't really in it. Your heart isn't really for the things of God. But it's better for it to be an internal decision because when it's an internal de decision and your heart has now set itself upon doing this act for the Lord, doing what it is that God has told you to do, there is nothing that can set you off of it. God sees it. God sees the heart of what it is that you are doing. He sees that you have a heart to obey. But then it says, here it is, and decree a thing. So when your heart has decided on a certain matter, then you decree it, which means it comes out of your mouth, you speak it, it must happen. It says, and it shall be established for you. That word established means to make firm, means to, it doesn't, it's not wavering, right? That means you decide in your heart. I'm gonna give you an example. That means you decide in your heart you're going to live a healthy lifestyle. You make the decision in your heart first. It's not just the act of it, right? You're not, you're not just doing the actions because you know it's something you're supposed to do. No, this is a decision you made it in your heart. It's internal. Decide in your heart you're going to live a healthy lifestyle. And then you decree it. You begin to speak wor the word of God. You say, I shall prosper and be good health even, even as my soul prospers. I shall have life and I have it more abundantly. I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Never has the righteous been forsaken. You just continue to speak the word of God over your life concerning that very specific situation. Decree and declare it. Then it will be established. This means it's going to be made firm. This means that you won't waver, right? You won't go back. You won't go back to eating that junk, that trash. You won't go back to treating your temple, which is the, the house of God, right? The Holy Spirit dwells within you as some trash can. You won't go back. Because it's been made firm, it's been established. That's what the, that's what the word established means. You can look it up for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Then God gives you favor. Do you see it? It's Luke 2.52 all over again. You increase in wisdom. A wise person has set his heart on doing the things of God, right? You're doing the will of God. Then you increase in stature. Now... You're somebody who is established. You are established. You've been made firm. Then it says, and the light of God's favor will shine upon you. Do you not, do you see the connection there with Luke 2.52? You increase in wisdom and stature, then gain favor with God, and then favor with man. And that will be that way for you every single time. And so there are some things that will not happen for you unless you decree and declare it. But first you have to decide. That's Job 22.28. So nevertheless, you must open your mouth and speak. And I know this message is hitting home for many of you. I want you to comment below if this is hitting home for you. I want you to comment below if it's clicking for you. Because this message, I'm going to tell you by the Spirit of God, it's going to trigger something in your life. It's going to trigger something in your life and we'll pray for you. I encourage you even to send in a prayer request. We'll pray for you. I'm just being real with you. 
but it's going to require you to speak the word of God and then you'll see the victory. And then you'll see the victory. And once you see it, once you see the word of God work for you in that way, you don't go back. You do it every time, every single time, every single time. And so your faith must be tested. And so now that you know this truth, you're going to speak the word of God and you're going to see great victory and it will turn in your favor. And so I believe this has blessed many of you. I want to say a prayer for you. I want to say a prayer for you because I believe that many of you, even some things that are going on in your life right now, you're going to speak the word of God. You're going to take authority over it. You're going to get victory and you're going to see great favor. This is a turning point for many of you. So I want you to come into agreement, agreement with me in prayer. I thank you, Lord, for sending your children to this message. I know that there are many plans that you have for them. You tell us in Jeremiah 29, 11, that you have plans to give us hope and a future, not to harm us, but to prosper us. We thank you, Lord, for these plans that you have planned for us long ago. Even before the foundation of the world, you knew us and you chose us to be in you. You knew we'd be here at this exact moment. You knew we'd be here hungry for you, searching for you, seeking you, Lord God. And then you even tell us in your word that you reward those who diligently seek you. We thank you, Lord, that your word is just filled with the promises of God that we can take hold, that we can grab hold of it and receive it for ourselves. We thank you, Lord, that you left us here with this holy book and your spirit, God, so that it moves across the page. It comes alive to us. And now we are people who can have life more abundantly because you have left us with your spirit, but you're still sitting, sitting on the throne, Lord God, at the right hand of the father. We thank you, Lord, for delegating authority to us and then teaching us how to rise above in it, to take authority over all the power of the devil. I ask that you will release revelation to your children, understanding, new understanding, Lord God, with the anointing that is flowing so that they see through the scriptures that were taught, them, taught to them today, that they can take authority over anything that comes their way, speak the word of God and get the victory and see favor. This is the turning point for them. I ask that as things begin to transpire in their life, as situation and circumstances come against them, Lord God, as they come up in their life, Lord God, it begins to form that they remember. Remember, yes, the word of God spoke about this. I can speak the scripture over this situation and I will get the victory and they will see the victory because your word will never return back void. I thank you, Jesus, that you are living and alive. I thank you, Jesus, that you rose again and that you're coming back. I thank you, Lord, for always being here with us never leaving us or forsaking us and continuously transforming us more and more into the image of you so that on that day we get a well done good and faithful servant i thank you lord that you have given us the opportunity to live for you and be with you and be reconciled back to you and give you all of the glory i thank you lord for everything you're doing in our lives everything you will do because ultimately we know it's already done we're just waiting for it to show up on time because you are an on time God, on time and in season. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we give you all of the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. So I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that, you know, many of you have decided to be here for real, like be here rooted under this ministry. And you tune in every single time. We do see those of you who do. And I'm going to tell you something. I was talking to my husband the other day and we were talking about how those who are rooted under this ministry and they're here for real and they, they tune in to every message and they sow here, they tithe here, they join the mentorship. Maybe you don't do that, but you just, you're just receiving, right? You're here and you're allowing yourself to be fed. Your life changes, completely changes. I say it all the time and it's happening more rapidly where I'm saying those of you come into the ministry, you root yourself here, you listen, you take notes. There are many of you who say, well, I have pages filled with, with notes. Good. Wonderful. That's a person who has moved off milk. You're on the meat and you will see your life be transformed because you're, it's becoming a part of you, right? You're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. When that happens, your life changes, right? When you change, your life change. And so what we were talking about is how those who are under this ministry and they're under this ministry for real, they see change in their life. They take authority over the works of the devil in their life. And it's a different 
different kind of people, they're just different. They're very different. That's all I can say. That's the best way I can say it. They're, they're just different. And so I believe that as you are somebody who is led here to continue to be fed by the word that is going forth here, the anointing that is here, and you commit yourself to going deeper into relationship with the Lord, right? You want to go to that next level in your walk with the Lord. Then you'll see your life transform. Actually, I want to say a prayer for those of you who are here and you have never given your life to the Lord. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for reminding me of that. I want to say a prayer because Jesus loves you. He loves you and he knew from before the foundations of the world that you would be here listening to this. I don't know how you got to this message. I don't know if someone shared it with you or if it was autoplay, whatever. You're here for a reason. The Lord knew you'd be here at this moment. And so I want to honor, I want to honor you for even listening to this point, right? I want to honor you for being here, making that internal choice by saying this prayer with you. And I encourage you to speak, like speak it out loud. This is not one of those prayers that you can say in your heart. You have to speak it out loud. Let the Lord hear you, right? Let the devil hear you and know that it's going to be a catalyst to a completely new life. So I want you to say, I thank you, Lord, for ordering my steps here, for ordering my steps here so that this very moment I may give my life to you. I ask, Lord, that you come into my heart. I ask that you search my heart and see that I am genuinely desiring to live a life set apart for you. I ask that you come into my heart and dwell there. Send your spirit, Lord, to live within me. I ask, Lord God, that you begin to use me for your glory. I want my will to be your will. I bend my will to your will, Lord God. Move me fully and 100% in alignment with you. Make me a new creation in you. Make me over, Jesus. Transform me by the renewing of my mind so that my life may be transformed, so that I may be a reflection of you. I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I thank you for making me a new creation in you. And I give you all of the honor. I give you all of the praise. I give you all of the glory. Amen. So if you said that prayer, I am just grateful to be the person to welcome you into the body of Christ. I'm grateful to be that person. I'm grateful that you're here. I ask that you stay here because I know that the Lord has an incredible new dimensions of just life with him that he wants to take you into. And I'm talking about, your, you'll, you'll look back on this moment and you'll realize that was the moment that everything changed for me. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to leave you with something uh, that I had wrote in one of my old KJV Bibles. And I believe it's going to bless you as you continue on in your walk with the Lord. Even those of you who are, you've been in the walk with Jesus, right? You've been in relationship with him for many years is going to help you as well. Whatever comes to you in life, material things, whatever it is, have an open hand. But with the word of God, with your relationship with God, keep a very tight hand. Stay close to Jesus. Everything else have an open hand, right? And I'm going to tell you, there's nothing you'll let go of that the Lord won't bring back to you, right? There's nothing you'll let go of that the Lord will not bring back to you better or multiply. I want you to remember that. And your life will never be the same. And so for everyone under the sound of my voice, I encourage you to get a seat in the ground. I encourage you to get a seat in the ground. And I'm just going to say, let the Lord speak to you. Let the Lord speak to you about the amount. Let the Lord speak to you about what scripture to tie to it. Let the Lord speak to you about the time to sow it, right? And God's going to move. You're going to receive a mighty harvest. I'll leave you with two scriptures to stand on. If those of you who want to tie it into scripture, you just don't know which one, I'll leave you with two. And so there's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, where the word of God says, those who sow sparingly will reap sparingly. Those who sow bountifully will reap bountifully. And that's the reason I'm leaving with that scripture is because I've heard many people say, well, we're in the word of God. Does it say that 
you must sow to reap a harvest. Well, there it is. There, Paul is literally saying it. You can go any translation of the Bible and it will say exactly that or it'll say, it'll say that. And then I'll also leave you with Luke chapter 6, verse 38, where the word of God says, as you give, it will be given back to you with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And so there it is again. And that is the God's principle of seed time and harvest. And then that's sowing and reaping how it works. I was just learning about this earlier. That's also Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. You will reap what you sow. And it's all, it's weaved all throughout scripture. And the more that you read the word, you'll learn the word and the word will work for you. And so I encourage you to sow and put seed in the ground concerning what the Lord has put on your heart and you will receive a harvest. I thank you, Lord, for giving us your Holy Bible. I thank you that your principle of seed time and harvest time was specifically for your children. We know that you spoke about it to the disciples privately because it was for only those who follow you. And so as they catch this revelation, I ask, Lord God, that you will breathe life onto their seed. Breathe life unto it so that it comes back quickly and it comes back multiplied. I thank you, Lord, for their harvest. I thank you, Lord, for always being sure that your children have everything they need and then oftentimes more than what they need. I thank you, Lord, for elevating them and increasing them into greater levels of their destiny. I thank you for opening up your word to them and and giving them revelation concerning it. There are many people who read the word, but they don't have revelation. And so I thank you, Lord, for giving it to your children today. And I'm standing with them, partnering my faith with theirs, coming into agreement for the hundredfold harvest. As you said, if any of you agree on earth in my name, that I will do. And so I'm agreeing with them for the hundredfold. I thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so... I'll leave you with that. That option is below in the description. There's also an option to send in prayer requests and testimonies. We love to pray with you the will of God, and we love to celebrate with you. That is below in the description as well. And so on that note, I want you to know that I love you all. I am always praying for you. We are always praying for you. And I'll talk with you in the next message.